Hey everyone, Sergey here from EucreMedia.com, and I'm currently working on updating SmartRect, and I just wanted to show you some of the features that I have added so far. And by the way, your feedback is very important. So in this video, in the comments below, if you have been using SmartRect, I would love to hear from you. I would love to see what kind of features you would like to see in SmartRect, and maybe some things you would like to improve. Whatever it is, definitely leave a comment below this video. I, uh, your feedback is very important to me. So let me show you some of the features that I have added so far. This is what SmartRack 3.2 looks like. And as you can see, we have a whole new area in here. And this is very simple. We have a fill color, the stroke color, and then a stroke width. It's very similar to what you would see in the shape layer. As you can see, we have fill, stroke, and then uh, like the uh, stroke width. It's very simple. And let's see, what else? The, well. We have a checkbox, so you can enable it or disable it like this. You can click on the fill color. You can change it to any color you want. You can alter all of these values in here. Press OK when you're done. As you can see, it updates it. Very nice. You can do the same thing for the stroke. You can uh, enable it, disable it. You can also change the color of it. So let's take it to something like yellow. And then the same thing goes for this stroke uh, width. So you can use up and down arrow keys to change the value. So let's take it up to 8. And let's say, uh, for example, you have everything created, you know, everything adjusted. Then you can just select your layers and then create a shape layer for every single layer. As you can see, it applied everything we've altered here to those layers. So that's nice. Let me undo this. All right. So let's keep going. What, what else have I added here? So I also added the same kind of arrow key stuff to the margin. So you can go over here and use up and down arrow key and it will increase and decrease by 10. If you hold down Alt, it will increase and decrease by 1. If you hold down Control, it will increase and decrease by 0.1, right? It's going to go into decimals. And if you hold Shift, it will do the same thing for like hundreds, right? That's good. Then if you hold, let's do up and down arrow key, something like this, 30. Let's go to the next one. Let's do the same thing, 30. You can do the same thing for left and right. So we can increase it by 50. You know, having those arrow keys, I mean, it seems very simple, but it does help your workflow big time. And uh, I can't believe I didn't add it before. So uh, it's a minor change, but it will help you guys big time. So again, you can select your layers, you can run it. Let's say, let's create a shape layer for every single text selected. And let's have the anchor point of each shape layer to be at the top left corner like this. Boom, as you can see, if I select any of these shape layers, you can see anchor point is at the top left corner and uh, you can let me undo this let's select auto size and do the same thing boom we can go over here and select the shape layer and uh, we can adjust the scale as you can see it goes to the top left corner we can change it at any time to maybe like let's go with bottom left okay and the same thing here we can increase decrease all that stuff so very handy and again it's auto sizable so you can change the text and it works fine so those are the changes that have to do with the UI and uh, they're minor. Well, this one is a pretty big one. You guys talked about um, having the ability to change the fill and the stroke. So that's why I've added and I think uh, it's going to help you guys out big time. So let's keep going here. We have another example. So let's say we have this text and uh, I'm going to animate something to kind of show you the next example. So let's animate this text just by animating the uh, position, right? We're going to take it down to maybe like 260 something like that let's go to uh, range selector and uh, let's go to advance shape let's go ramp up ease high let's do 50 and low 100 and what else uh, let's do based on words there you go so now we can animate this something like this right let's go start over here set a keyframe let's go down 30 frames one two three and let's take this up all right something like this is good so we have like a basic text animation nothing crazy but i just want to show you an example of what uh, smart rect used to not do so for example if i select this text and if i run smart rect let's put it at the bottom bottom right corner and that works fine however if i start scrolling you can see that it's doing something interesting i mean it's maintaining the size of the text layer. That's great, right? But uh, 
sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want for the shape to stay in here, right? And for the text to kind of animate in. So I've added some more features into, um, or I guess settings into the shape layer, Smart Rec. So you can select this and go to the effect control panel. And in here, if you go to the shape size settings, uh, you'll see all kinds of different uh, settings in here. So the first one is size layer. So this one's based on title, right? This text. And by the way, a lot of you have been asking this. So let's say I want to select both of these and copy it and put it into a different composition. So if I go to a different composition, let me get rid of all of this. And if I paste it, you can see that it breaks. And the reason why, because uh, After Effects doesn't remember this size layer. You have to tell it again. So go title. And when you do that, it's going to automatically correct itself. So just a tip uh, for those of you that have to copy things from one, one composition to another. All right, so let's do this. So how do we fix this? How do I make it stay here and not do that? So if you go back to the shape and if you go back to the shape size settings and here we have width based on and height based, based on. So we, we're going to be dealing with height because our text moves up and down. So in here right now, it's set to current time. And current time mean, means this current time indicator. So wherever it is, that's the size you're going to get. And that's why you know it's changing. But if you don't want it to change, you can click on it and you can say, hey, let's do it based on where my size is at comp endpoint. So comp endpoint is right here. So the size of the shape is in here. So if I animate this, you can see it's going to stay based on where my comp in is. So if I move this, right, the text layer, right, then it's going to always be where the comp in is. So you can do the same thing for like comp out. Right, this out point, so wherever it is right there, like this, right, whatever shape you have at the out points, th that's what it's going to maintain throughout the whole animation. Very simple. Then the same thing goes for middle. Sometimes you want to do it based on middle, comp middle, so it's going to find the middle, right? So that's the shape we have in the middle. It's going to maintain that shape. So basic stuff, but trust me, this will come in very handy as you animate text, especially. So then we have the same thing for layer. So that had to do with composition, but sometimes you want to do based on layer. So the same concept, we have layer endpoint. So based on this layer endpoint. So if I put this endpoint in here, that's the size I get there, and it's going to maintain that size. The same concept goes for middle. So layer middle. So middle is right here, but if I change the middle, right now the middle is about here. And that's the size it's going to maintain. All right. And uh, one few more. So we have layer out, the same concept based on where it is right here, right? That's the size we're going to get. But if I put this out point about here, or maybe sooner right there, right? That's the size it's going to maintain. All right. You're going to see another example of this. It will make more sense. But also, another thing I want to point out, we have also, I've added this custom time. And when you do that, then you go to custom height and you can tell it exactly where you want it to be. So if you want it to be at two seconds, you just type two seconds. Now notice custom time has a like a certain number there right now because wherever, you know, when you create a new shape, let's say I created here, let's do like a two second mark, right? Wherever your time indicator is when you create a new shape like this, by default, it's going to set this value where your time indicator was. So that might come in handy later on. So that's another feature that, that I've added to Smart Rect. It's a minor one, but if you do a lot of text animation, it will definitely come in very handy. And let me show you another example. So we have example three, and we have things kind of animating. Great. So let's do this. I'm going to select this and disable stroke. We're going to have auto size enabled, and let's deselect dis um, parenting, right? And then I want to enable masking. Right, so when I have everything selected, and if I run a new shape layer for each selected text, as you can see, it changes, right? And uh, I, don't want, I don't want to do that. So what I want to do, I'm going to go into each layer. So I'm going to go into this layer. We're going to go select or press E to kind of reveal the um, effects. We're going to go all the way down to shape size settings. And remember, we're going to take the height and set it to, let's do layer middle midpoint. Right, so we're going to select this. We're going to also select this property, copy it, Control C. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to select all the other ones and paste it. All right, I did, there you go. So now if I preview it, you can see it animates in, which is very handy. I mean, you can even turn these off. And now in no time, you create something very interesting. But let's take it a bit further. 
So now I can select the same text layers. We can select like this. I can go back to Smart Rack, disable fill, maybe enable our stroke here, and uh, let's just run it. And now it creates, obviously, we have a mask selected. So fill is gone. Therefore, you only if you have mask selected, it's only going to show up in your stroke. So that's a big no-no. So I'm going to undo this, deselect masking, and do the same thing again. So now we have stroke, so something like this. And again, we already have copied the, um, the, the shape size, right? We, we've copied that. So I'm going to select this, all the strokes that we just created and paste it. And let's see what that does. So instantly you create something interesting. You can change the text, right? You can do, you know, type anything you want and it will automatically adjust. There you go. Very handy. You can also go in, even further than that. Let's select the stroke and uh, let's add some kind of a, like a trim path. There you go. And in here, let's animate the stroke so we can do something like from 100. Let's go down like 30 frames and uh, animate this in, maybe adjust easing. So to the left side here, we're going to adjust, maybe take it to like 75. So we have something animated like this, maybe, you know, adjust that. One second. Well, let's do easing. Yeah, let's adjust easing on this one as well. Maybe do some, something like 30. All right, let's see what happens. That's good. We can select this trim path and we can paste it to all the other stroke layers. So that's a stroke one. That's as well. Let's see all of our keys here. Let's kind of alter them real quick. I know I'm flying here. I just want to show you practical examples that I use them for, you know. And let's preview this. So again, in no time, we created something very interesting. Again, you can change all of this stuff up and it will adjust. So yeah, those are the changes that I have added to SmartRack 3.2. Again, if you have any kind of feedback, if you, have, if you want to see some features in SmartRack, definitely don't be shy. Leave a comment below. But until next time, my name is Sergey Proknevsky and this is ukramedia.com.